Welcome to the INET Competition 2021 Summary Overview. As usual, the INET Competition sourced all of its data from the iNaturalist Project, which is a large collection of natural world observations collected and curated by a community of enthusiasts. The task this year was still species classification, so given an image, competitors were tasked with identifying the species present. Compared to previous competitions, the 2021 dataset has increased both the number of species and the number of training images. This year, the dataset has 10,000 species with 2.7 million training images, where the distribution across species is fairly uniform. Unlike the previous years, every image in the 2021 dataset comes with location and time information so that competitors can explore how to incorporate these types of metadata into their solutions. The evaluation protocol was top one error, and the results on the private leaderboard ended up looking like this, with brown, blue, green, DD taking the top spot, followed by amazing and sunshine on left. Congratulations to the winners and to all the competitors that participated. We asked the competitors to describe their final solutions, and these teams submitted descriptions. Transformer architectures are gaining popularity in the vision community and of the teams that described their method, the top three employed some sort of transformer architecture in their solution. CNNs are still present, and the top team had an ensemble with transformers and CNNs. Teams reported that they used efficient nets, resnets, exception, and regnet. All teams used some form of test time augmentation, which typically involved taking multiple crops of a high resolution input. Finally, some of the teams, including the top two teams, utilize location and date information to help improve classification accuracy. Even though the metric was top one error, we had teams submit their top five predictions for each image so that we can investigate less strict error measures. For 10,000 way classification, we are really impressed with the results. The second place team actually clips the first place team for top two through top five error measures with a very impressive error of just 0.007 for top five. We can break down the 10,000 species into iconic groups and look at the top one error within those groups. This sort order is based on the performance of the first place team, brown, blue, green, DD, whose average score is printed above each group. Mammals have the highest error rate with a value of 0.069, followed by fungi, and then birds, fish, reptiles, amphibians, plants, mollusks, the catch-all group of animalia, arachnids, and finally insects have the lowest error rate with a value of 0.029. Now we can investigate pairs of species that the top 10 teams struggled with the most. The first being this pair of plant species we can see that ranges overlap significantly, so the extra location and date information probably didn't help disambiguate this pair. And this is the confusion matrix from the top team for these two plants. And we can see significant confusion be between the two. Another pair that was difficult with, were these two lichen species, also with highly overlapping ranges. And similarly, we can see that there was a decent amount of confusion for these species from the best team solution. Another difficult pair were these two plants. Interestingly, the distribution of the plant on the right looks like it's a subset of the distribution of the plant on the left. And if we look at the confusion matrix for, for the top team, we can potentially see a quirk of that distribution where the top team had a nearly perfect performance uh, on a, the species that had a broader distribution, but had a significant error rate for the species whose distribution was a subset of the other. These cacti from southern United States were also difficult uh, for the top 10 teams, where again you see significant confusion between the two, particularly uh, this, this one, the Texas prickly pear. Finally, the last example is this pair of damselflies, which again show a significant range overlap, so the location and date information is probably not super relevant. And again, we see significant confusion between these pairs from the top team and if we do a quick Google search, it reveals that one way to classify these species is to zoom in and focus on the claspers that are found at the end of the tails. The marsh bluet has a forked claspers, 
while the Hagen's blue, it has triangular, slightly upturned claspers. A fine grained classification problem, to say the least. Thanks for watching this brief summary video. We'd like to thank the competitors again, and please join us this Friday, June 25th, at the FGDC 8 workshop to learn more about the competition and hear from the competitors.